When you think about football in Paris, one club's name surely comes to mind, and that is PSG. But in the second division, Paris FC exists. PSG's little brother? Today we are going to be taking over little brother and making Paris FC not only the best team in Paris, the best team in France, but the best team in Europe, as we will be taking them from the French second division to the Champions League final. Today, we rebuild Paris FC. But lads, if you are new to the Jaron HD channel, make sure you join the squad, join the gang, bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen a rebuild video in the past, here are the rules. The objective of the rebuilds are to win the UEFA Champions League final. All games in the rebuild are simulated. We cannot use the new jump in feature in rebuilds. The Champions League final, however, must be played. And of course, do not get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. There's the rules and objectives. Now it's time to jump into the rebuild. So this is the starting 11 that we have to start with here in season number one. It's an interesting one. There are certain players that have decent potential, but nobody that really stands out in terms of additions to the side, upgrades to the side in this first season, especially the first transfer window. Probably gonna focus on the center back role, left midfielder as well, maybe even a new striker or something like that, but definitely a bit of room for us to grow and a lot of work to do if we want to get up to the league. I feel like ever since I've started playing these rebuilds on PC, some of the players we get initially, like the homegrown heroes, are insane. Matisse Hernandez, a center forward, already five star, five star, 72 overall at age 17. This kid looks like an absolute freak and I'm I'm definitely getting him in the starting 11 straight away. I am going to focus on converting him to a tacking and midfielder as well. So I did say I wanted to improve at the left mid spot. We have started off here with the signing of the Spanish midfielder, Jeremy, coming across here from Villarreal for 4.2 million pounds. And a player departure here as the French midfielder, Florian Martin, is headed off to Poland, off to Warsaw for 630,000 pounds. Another midfielder out of the club is Noman Janahari headed to the Turkish league here, 350,000 pounds again in our back pocket. This kid, Thibault Campanini, looks like he's got okay growth. I'm gonna loan him out for a little bit and see if we can get something happening here. Off to Club America for the season. The clean out continues, however, lads. Cyril Manduki headed off to Leganes in the Spanish leagues. 1.25 again in our back pocket. Put that towards hopefully a center back. Can't believe it, lads. We've sold Kante. Unfortunately, it's not N'Golo Kante. If it was N'Golo Kante, there'd be no chance I'd be selling him, but it is Usman Kante headed to New York City FC. So it's finally time for Hernandez to go. He's all, okay. So I've converted Hernandez to an attacking midfielder and just by converting him from a center forward to an attacking midfielder, my man is 75 overall. That is ridiculous. Oh my god. Since we do have Jeremy, we no longer need Julian Lopez. So the Algerian winger headed to Girona. Again, decent price tag, 1.4 mil. Ali Abdi also out of the club. The Tunisian left back headed to Cardiff City for 1.2 mil. And we've finally gone out and got ourselves a new centre back. And it is a Frenchman. It is Loic Bardé coming across here from RC Lens. 4.5 million pounds for the young French center half. Patrick Golfi is headed to the Chinese on a Chinese league, I should say, on a season long loan off to Shanghai Shenhua for the season. There we go, two signings into the club, but two big signings at that. Jeremy and Bade, hopefully gonna be here for the long term, hopefully can grow with us as we grow up in stature, but two players in, a whole heap out of the club. We've really got the broom out and started to clean out of Paris FC. Obviously not too much changing, but we do have Hernandez, of course, who's 70, that's just ridiculous, 75 already. Jeremy Bade into the starting 11. Honestly, not sure what to expect in this first season. I don't know if we should be pushing for promotion. My knowledge of French League 2 isn't that strong, but we'll suss it out regardless. Okay, I will take that. I will certainly, certainly take that. On the 1st of January, 19 games into this League 2 season, we currently find ourselves second with Paris FC, 
three points away from the top of the league. I believe automatically promotion is like automatic promotion is for the top two sides. I think it goes a semi final and then the like final and all that stuff in the uh, playoffs. But I want to not worry about that. I want to get first. If we get first, that's automatic promotion regardless. We are going to look to get some business going here in January, however. It is Czech Umar Diakite, the young French midfielder of the Hamburg on a season, for the rest of the season on loan. Marvin Gakpa is out of the club. The Frenchman is headed to Sivaspor, 1.75 million pounds. Let's go try finding ourselves a centre midfielder slash centre defensive midfielder. You know what? I have decided, I was looking at the squad and I was like, we actually need a little bit of growth in the right back spot. So Timothy Pembele, we have signed from our big brother club in PSG. I want to get one of their talent, one of our rivals. I want to take one of their best kids and make him into an absolute star at Paris FC. Timothy Pembele, welcome to Paris FC. He doesn't even have to move apartments. Also gonna send the young French goalkeeper, Obed and Cambadio off to Atach, or Altach, I should say, on another loan. Loan season here for our young fellas. Usman Kamara, also out on loan, off to Raul Oviedo. <laughs> All good things come in threes. Juan Hajam is headed to Goztepe on loan as well. So a lot happening in this January transfer window, but on paper, one player in, one player out. Pembele into the starting 11, and hopefully he can be a key piece into us hopefully getting promoted in this first season. Uh, <laughs> what? What? Are you? Okay. Right. We went from being confident about promotion automatically up to League 1 to not even making the playoffs. We have finished 7th in this first season. Two points out of the playoffs. But how the hell have we bowled that so hard? Oh my god. At the other end of the table, FC Chambly, Pau FC, Nancy, all these sorts of sides in the relegation zone. Lille have won Coupe Nationale, and it is Mets who are headed up to League 1 on away goal. Liverpool win an all English Champions League final. <laughs> right, whilst Napoli beat Burnley. Burnley in the Europa League final, right. This is a weird season. Okay, so that's season one done and dusted here at Paris FC. Weird crap happening. The universe has shifted around, but we're gonna take it on the chin. We're gonna roll into season two, continue to improve the side and hopefully secure automatic promotion this season. All right, kicking off season number two here, lads. Have decided to sell one of the higher rated, but one of the elder players in our side. Florian Hunnin is headed to Tigres in the Mexican League. The Mexican Giants signing him for 1.7 million pounds. Patrick Coffey is back from his season long loan in China. And we're making him pack his bags again as he is off to Gaziantep on a season long loan. And there it is, it is a new left back into the starting 11. Not only do we improve one overall, but we also get a younger player. Alexander Bernabe is joining us here from Lanús in the Argentinian league for 6.4 million pounds, overpaid a little, but Long term, I think it's a good investment. Once again, sending Encambiado or Cam Encambadio off on a season long loan this year to Huddersfield. And it is going to be Mario Jason Kikonda out on a permanent move again. I feel like the past two seasons have just been me absolutely cleaning shop, but he's off to the Turkish League. Another one of our bigger name players, Mustafa Name, headed to Sheffield United, have got 2.15 million pounds for him. So now, I think it's finally time to try signing a defensive midfielder. And there it is, we have gone to the Portuguese league and come back with Rodrigo Fernandes, the Portuguese defensive midfielder signing on from Sporting for 4.6 million pounds. I feel like every transfer window, I'm just signing two players, just two additions to the squad, but two massive additions to the left back role and the defensive midfield role. Hopefully these guys can get us over the line and don't result in us absolutely choking the league, but Let's go look at the side now. This Hernandez kid is turning into an absolute beast. To be fair, now I look at the squad even more in depth, Jeremy and Barney have had insane season ones as well. Like, actually doing pretty well in terms of our depth at the moment. Just gotta keep improving this starting 11, keep getting guys going up in overall, and hopefully keep climbing up the table. Well, <laughs> this is not going to plan in the slightest. We are currently sitting sixth in League Two, four points out of the playoffs, 
and 19 points away from Stade Brestois, who are top of the league, we have got some serious work to do if we want to salvage this season. All right, so once again, I am going to send Campanini on a loan. This time, it's only a short loan off to President's Eleven in the Turkish League. But up top, we have decided to sell Warren Caddy to Tenerife in the Spanish League for 920k. I've also decided to sell our young right midfielder, Morgan Gudavagi, or Gudavagiu. I don't know how to pronounce your name, so I'm just going to call you Morgan. Luckily, we probably don't have to talk about this guy ever again. Morgan off the Beeler field in the German League for 1.5 mil. Also, thought I'd fill you guys in Vincent DiMarcone who I have zero intentions of ever using 38 years of age 61 overall will be leaving leaving us on a pre-contract deal at the end of the season there it is lads we have signed ourselves a new right midfielder now you may be looking at this man here Lucas Susic who we have signed from RB Salzburg you might be looking being like that's an attacking midfielder Luckily, position swaps exist this year. I'm going to convert Luka Susic into a right midfielder, but we have paid 4.7 million pounds for the Croatian midfielder. And here is evidence of us converting Luka to a right midfielder. It's going to take a little while, but it's going to be worth it in the long term, I feel. There we go, lads. Continuing the business. Need to turn our season around. Hopefully, Luka provides the boost that we're after. Let's just crack on. Surely we're not going to finish in like seventh again. Oh my God. What a second half of the season. We have absolutely pulled that one out of our asses. I would love to go back when, I, when I'm editing this. I can't wait to go back and see how many like losses we had in January. Did we go the whole second half of the season undefeated? That is... Absolutely phenomenal. Stade Brestois have just absolutely walked the league. But I think second place means we're automatically promoted to League 1. Once again, the same sort of names. Chilling at the bottom of League 2, however. Power FC, FC Chambly, and Chateau all down the bottom. Lyon have taken down Lorient to win Coupe Nationale. And it is FC Mets surviving the relegation game by the skin of their teeth for a second successive season. Real Madrid take down Juventus to win the Champions League. Napoli have gone back to back as well in the Europa League. Bloody hell. Also, I wanted to take a look at our top performers here in the promotion campaign. Gaetan Laura, Laura, I should say, Gaetan Laura and Diaby Fadiga have been the absolute weapons. 22 and 20 goals respectively. Hernandez and Jeremy getting 10 and 11 assists. Really the same sort of names carrying us this season. But now we are in to the top flight of French football. Gonna need some big improvement if we are gonna survive League 1, however. Season three, Paris FC in League 1. Let's crack on with it. All right, so here we are. Life begins in the top flight, and I realized our squad numbers were looking very, very thin. However, I have stumbled upon a few players. The first one, a massive pickup that could eventually, like, he's probably going to give Fernandez a bit of a run for his money. It's Zandal van der Toxito Rias, a Brazilian defensive midfielder. Maybe it's Fernandinho's regen. I certainly hope so, at least. The Brazilian regen joining us here on a free. But I thought we desperately needed an upgrade in between the sticks. Whilst Didier Dupre was growing nicely, I was like, we're going to struggle if we're playing in League 1 with a 70-rated goalkeeper. So we have sent him on a permanent deal, linking back up with Usman Kante at New York City FC. Another one of our free agent youth players has accepted a contract, however. Zachariah Ezarifani, the Moroccan defender, could be Benassia's region? I don't know. I'm just trying to think off, off the top of my head here. But we have signed him on a free. Like I said before, all good things come in freeze. Mo Taylor, young English striker. Not even going to try hypothesize whose regen he could be. But Mo Taylor joining us on a free for 20k a week. Now time for an actual signing with a price tag behind it. The Furo Morales, the Argentinian goalkeeper, joining us. Another player joining us from Lanús. We're kind of the Lanús feeder club. Well, the Lanús senior team, I guess you'd say. Lacturo Morales joining us for 14 mil. So there we go. Didn't have a crazy budget to work with at the start. Also want to think about what we're going to do dependent on what sort of a league position we're sitting in on the 1st of January. But a new goalkeeper in between the sticks into the club. A few quality, quality young players into the team as well. But this is what the starting 11 is looking like now as we head into our maiden league on campaign. Taylor, I was like, I was like, all right, let's, 
we may as well just put him start, like, straight into the starting 11. Laura, whilst he's higher rated now, Taylor has the age on his side. I don't know what this Taylor kid could be. So I'm going to start him in the number nine role, see what happens with him. Definitely think my next upgrade probably needs to be a defender ahead of Bamba, but we're going to see what league and life is looking like halfway through the season. I thought for sure we'd be absolutely in the mud with the relegation battle, but we currently sit ninth in the league. Looks like there's a bit of room to grow, but also it looks like we're not super safe. Only five points behind 13th place Monaco. But so far, I am impressed. I am going to send Hadjam out on another loan, however, off to Bezistas for the remainder of the season. And I am going to keep the faith with Mo Taylor. So Gaetan Laura staying in the French League, headed to FC Lorient for 6 mil. And we are going to make an upgrade in the back line here. It's only a slight little upgrade, but again, time on our side. Chris Lane, Matsima, the young French defender, joining us here from AS Monaco for 6.7 mil. He'll be, make a nice combo, surely, with uh, Leek Bade. But there we go, lads. Matt Seema into the club. Laura out on a permanent deal. Hopefully, that only strengthens us and puts us further up the table in League 1 this season. But at the end of Season 3, our maiden League 1 campaign, let's see where we finish. It is the definition of a mid-table campaign. 10th in League 1 here. 48 points. You know what? I am certainly not complaining about that. I thought we would be in a relegation battle. Interested to see who, like how the difference was, but mid mid table, I will happily take that. Clear to see we've got a fair bit of work ahead of us. However, if we want to catch up to Big Brother PSG, adding another league and title to the trophy cabinet, ninety one points for them. Whilst it is Saint Etienne in the relegation playoff, while Stade de Rams and Stade Brestois have been automatically relegated. Lyon take down Marseille to win Coupe Nationale. Saint Etienne defeat Khan and are staying up in Ligue 1. Barcelona take down Man City in the Pep Guardiola derby to win the Champions League final. Whilst it is PSG continuing to stake their claim as the biggest club in Paris as they take down Atletico Madrid in the Europa League final. But there we go, lads. I'm very happy from a personal standpoint of our start to life in League 1. Just got to keep building on it in season number four. Hopefully don't suffer from second season syndrome. Let's crack on season four. All right, so kicking off season four here, I was debating keeping this guy, sending him out on loan and getting him a little bit more growth, but we have sent Said Arab off to Reading in the English Championship, I would assume, for 1.55 mil. I've also decided to part ways with Axel Bamba I'm on a permanent deal off to FC Augsburg. I love how I'm sending Xander Toxido Rias on a season-long loan. We're like mid-table in the French League, and I've sent him to bloody Manchester United. I, like, to be honest, as long as he comes back higher than he is right now, I'll be happy with that. Best of luck at Man United, Vanda. I am also going to send Chris Leon Matsima back to AS Monaco, his parent club or his original club, on a season-long loan because when I signed him, I was like, yeah, he'll be great. But then I look at the side and I'm like, we could probably afford to go in for a higher rated player than him at this point. So Matsima out on loan to Monaco. And this is what I was angling towards, lads. Jean-Claire Todibo is joining us on a permanent deal. The young French defender signing from AC Milan for, sorry, yeah, AC Milan? Yeah, I think so, for 32 million pounds. Gonna sign another free agent purely just for squad depth. I don't expect Julian Van Moose to do anything decent for us, but our squad numbers are looking a little bit thin. So Julian Von Moose joining us on a free. Whilst Usman Kamara has been loaned out to Genoa for the season. Same deal here with Zachariah Ezarfani headed to Ajax for a season long loan. And if anybody knows how to harness young talent, it's Ajax. So we've left him in pretty capable hands. Just continuing to build out the depth and the youth of the squad. Ayub Yusfi is joining us on a free deal here. Well, Samir Shergi is headed off to Muscron in the Belgian league for 740,000 pounds. Look, I mean no disrespect to Samir Shujri or Shergi, but there is no way, like, well, to be fair, this is actually even worse. He's 24 in this save. At the start of it, he would have been, what, 21? I'm 24 in real life right now. There is no way that him and I look the same age. I look slightly younger. 
this dude looks at least 30. So there we go, lads. Three players in, three players out. But Todibo is going to be such a massive addition to our back line. The thing that I'm so paranoid about is surviving league in this season. So we've brought him in, shored up the defense to make sure hopefully second season syndrome is not a thing we suffer from. But just a little update of the squad. Hernandez and Jeremy are just a different class. They are different gravy. Hernandez up to an 85, Jeremy up, up to an 84. A Little bit of a race between them to see who finishes higher. But I'm very happy with that so far. Probably need to look at getting some higher growth for striker role. Although Taylor and Dia Bafag Biga are doing well for their age, but regardless, Let's go make sure second season doesn't happen. Second season syndrome. Okay, so, I mean, again, only the 1st of January. I expected a higher finish than 10th. That's what we finished last year. Again, paranoid about finishing out of the relegation zone. But 10th, let's pick it up for the second half of the season. Campanini's starting to get to the point, honestly, where I might look to sell him on to a permanent deal. He's 25 Growing slightly, gonna get, it, get him some more growth, hopefully, as we send him on loan to Sporting. I was debating so much about selling one of our strikers and trying to upgrade, but I thought, they don't have the dynamic player potential going crazy, so I'm like, if I sell them, will I have enough to make an impactful replacement? Probably not. So we've held steady for the moment, hopefully have enough arsenal in the club to keep ourselves up in league one and maybe even grow further. Just suss it out and see what season four finishes like. So there we go, lads. We have gone up two places compared to the halfway point of the season. Finishing eighth in league in this season. It's the slow and steady climb. We're in that middle range right now. Let's really kick on next year. Again, though, PSG, the gold standard. They finished top of the league almost as Centurion. Whilst it is Toulouse, Nimes Olympic, and Dijon all in the relegation zone. PSG have emerged as Coupe Nationale champions. Troyes take down Toulouse and relegate them to League 2. Manchester City get their revenge and win at the Champions League. Although I say revenge, it's not Barcelona they're bursting, but at least they win a Champions League title. It's about time. And our man Vanda is now a Europa League champion as Man United demolish Mönchengladbach to win Europa League. I'm putting my hands up, putting the controller down and saying my word. Matisse Hernandez, you are cooked. You are absolutely cooked, my man. 88 overall, 22 goals, four assists. 88 overall. Like, what? So there we go, lads. Some things to be very happy about. Some things to be not so happy about. But that's season four. Into the history books. Let's go and really turn a corner in this rebuild as we move into season five. So I'm very happy that I sent Chris Lay and Matt Seema out on loan to Monaco last season because not only has he come back, what, three or four overall higher, his value has skyrocketed and that means we've been able to sell Matsima to Roma for 43 million pounds. This season is about to become a lot more fun. All right, we're not messing about this season, lads. This is going to be the real turning point of the rebuild. Lamine Diab Diaby Fadiga. Got to slow down when I pronunciate larger names. But Diaby Fadiga is headed to Leicester City. Brendan Rodgers' men have paid 28.3 million pounds for him. I told you I was thinking about doing it. We have decided to pull the trigger and finally part ways with Thibaut Campanini as the French defender heads to Feyenoord for 3.1 mil. Gonna look to continue the growth of Diakite, however, as we send the Frenchman to Celta Vigo online. And there it is, lads. That is a big addition up top as we sell Jose Juan Macias, the French, French, Mexican striker. We signed the Mexican striker from Villarreal for 62.5 million pounds. Dude looks like an absolute weapon. I always see him as an option when I do these rebuilds, but I feel like right now is a good time to go for him. So we have made the signing here of Marcias, sold a lot of players, and I'm gonna keep a little bit of money in reserve, keep a little bit of money waiting for January to really see what our position in the table is like. I would love, 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 love to be pushing for European football, but we'll suss it out when we get to it. But this is what the starting 11 is now looking like. Hernandez, just an absolute gun. Just an absolute bloody weapon. 88 overall. Barde at an 84. Jeremy at an 85. Susic hitting the 80s. The majority of the starting 11 now entering the 80s. Hopefully Bernabe, Pembele, and Taylor will all be joining them at the halfway point. Also, a big few months coming up as Fernandez and Toxedo 
Xander or Vander. Both are just 81 overall, so could be a little bit of competition there. You love to see it, lads. Come on. Good start so far. I probably shouldn't get that carried away, but we currently find ourselves occupying fourth in League Un. We are in a Champions League spot here in season number five. Seven points away from PSG at the top of the league. Would love if PSG just dropped the ball and we end up finishing higher than them in the league. But Champions League qualification for me is priority number one. Gonna make another big signing. I told you guys I was waiting for this season, waiting for the January transfer window to see what we did with the squad and with the money. We have paid 39.3 million pounds, an absolute bargain bin price as we sign Vitaly Mykolenko, the Ukrainian defender from Leon, 39.3 mil. You love it. So there we go, that's January in the history books. Mikolenko into the starting 11. It's an upgrade of four or five overall left back role. So hopefully Mikolenko is enough to get us into the Champions League. Let's go find out. Champions League football coming to Paris FC next season, ladies and gentlemen, as we finish third in league on 82 points, 13 points ahead of Monaco and eight points behind Leon. Only four points, however, behind PSG. Maybe next season is the start of us finishing above PSG. Little brother taking down big brother. At the other end of the table, however, it's very surprising to see Nice. Nice automatically relegated from League Un and headed down to the second division with Lorient in the playoffs. We get our first piece of silverware. Come on, lads. We win Coupe Nationale 2-1 against Marseille. Let's go. How good is that? Lorient have been relegated, however, as Dijon win on away goals rule in the playoff final. Atletico Madrid take down PSG and win the Champions League 3-0. Whilst it is Borussia Dortmund winning an all-German Europa League final. Great first season here for Jose Juan Marcias. The Mexican striker has bagged himself 26 goals, gone up to 85 overall. Very happy with that. Jeremy Hernandez, the same sort of names continuing to really step up for us. But that is a phenomenal season five in the books. We are playing Champions League football next season. This is all going to plan. Come on, Paris SC. Let's see what we can do. All right, since we have Michaelenko in the starting side, and I got an offer, like, I couldn't, I was considering, I was like, maybe we keep Bernabe around as just a backup player, as a bench player, but we're at the point where I still want to make some big additions to the side. I think we're still another three years away or so from winning a Champions League. So we're going to sell Bernabe here to Leon. 40 million pounds in the back pocket. Not complaining. Exact same thought process with Rodrigo Fernandez. When I signed him initially, I honestly thought he was going to be an end game player. Then we went and found ourselves old mate Vander, the Brazilian beast himself. So I have decided to sell Rodrigo Fernandez to Everton for 38 million pounds. Patrick Coffey, once again, out on loan, headed to Alaves. Whilst I'm really, really going to shake things up here, Mo Taylor sold to Leeds United for 94 million pounds. Massive, massive money for a massive talent. But I want a super, I want, I want a super speed. I want to fast track this starting 11's development. And that is why we have gone out and got ourselves Laturo Martinez, the Argentinian striker, fresh off a Copa America championship, a Copa America win is joining us here on a permanent transfer from SC Barcelona. 140 million pounds for the Argentinian striker. 89 rated. That is a massive signing. Welcome to Paris FC, Lautaro Martinez. Also going to sign ourselves a young backup French goalkeeper. Could be Rufier's regen. Could be Hugo Lloris's regen. All I know is that this kid here, Amino Romil, looks like a bit of a beast. 18 years of age, 72 overall. Welcome to Paris FC. And we are going to sign this kid here, Ozkan Mbemba, on a permanent transfer. Four million pounds to bring him to Paris FC. I did not realize that getting third in the French League means we still have to go through playoffs. That is ridiculous. We finished third in Ligue 1, and now we're facing Bazistas in the qualifiers for the Champions League. Regardless, though, we're going to get into it at home. Keep a clean sheet against Bazish Das. No, we cannot. We're in trouble here. Despidov gets two goals there. Gets himself a brace. 
and Besiktas have the away goal lead in the Champions League qualifiers. So here we go, fellas. We need a big performance on the road as we travel to Turkey, taking on Besiktas, trying to get ourselves through to the next round of qualifying. I'm not sure if it's the next round of qualifying or if it's going to be automatically into the group stages after this. The fact we have to go through qualifying, finishing third is ridiculous. Regardless though, we're jumping into it against Bajishdas. Are we the through to the next stage? No, we are not. What? We fit, we've lost 5-4 to Bajishdas. And we're officially out of the Champions League. Are you taking the piss? All right, so that's the transfer window done and dusted. I'm still a little bit shell-shocked that we are not playing Champions League football this season. It's going to give us... I mean, I've just got to try saving the silver lining out of it. We've got to focus on Ligue 1. We've got to focus on Europa League. But we're going to continue to grow the side. And speaking of the side, this is the state of affairs at the moment. A few areas I think need improving. Todibo, Todibo probably needs to grow a little bit more here. Um, Susic probably needs to grow. Pembele, although you could say the same thing about Vando, who's 84 rated. I'm just probably cherry picking anyways. But we are trying. I guess the goal has to be top two nowadays. I guess that's the goal. Let's go see how the progress is going. This is more like it. Okay, okay, okay. We are top of League 1 here on the 1st of January. Undefeated currently this season. 11 points clear of Leon. We have set ourselves up brilliantly. Also, an important thing to note, lads. We are 14 points ahead of PSG. 14 points clear. Let's go. We could be the big deal in Paris now. And we are going to absolutely splash the cash here in the January transfer window, spending 96 million pounds to bring Pedro Porro into the club from Manchester City, the uh, Spanish, I always said the Brazilian, the Spanish right wing back joining us here, 87 rated, a big upgrade on top of Pembele. So that is the January transfer window into the books. Just the signing of Pedro Porro. Hopefully that upgrade of what? Four or five overall compared to Pembele is enough to secure us Champions League football, a higher place finish than PSG, and a League Un title. Let's see if that's the case. We are League Un champions with Paris FC. PSG actually picked it up in the second half of the season, but we finished six points ahead of PSG, Paris football on top, but we are now champions. Let's go. In the relegation zone, you got Guan Gum, Dijon, and Nantes all in trouble. We did win Trophy Champ at the start of the season 2-1 over Lyon, but we were unable to complete a domestic treble as Angers win Coupe Nationale. FC Nantes also staying up in the uh, League 1, I was in the Champions League, but they're staying up as they win 6-1. Real Madrid have won the Champions League. And we've lost! <laughs> we've lost! The Europa League final on a penalty shootout to AC Milan. Are you... Oh, at least that gives me confidence for next season. But we... The final of penalties, come on. Can we just take a moment to appreciate this first season from Lutero Martinez. 40 goals and 9 assists. Jeremy, 17 and 14. Susic, 16 and 13. The lads are sharing the wealth, which is great to see. What a season. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Whilst we got eliminated in the group state or in the qualifiers of the Champions League, that really hurt the soul. But we've salvaged an incredible season after a bleak start. League 1 champions, trophy champ champions, and Europa League finalists. Let's see if we can finally get a mark on the Champions League next season. So we're kicking off season number seven here with a little bit of charity. You know, where the, where the big guys in Paris now? You've got to help the little fellas out, you know? Like, they helped us out at the start by giving us Pembele. We're helping them out now by taking 93.5 million pounds and making them pay almost double the valuation of Lucas Susic. You love to see it. You love ripping off PSG. The Croatian midfielder heading to PSG for 93.5 million pounds. And in response... We have opened up the checkbook and have signed Ferran Torres here from Manchester City. 129 million pounds for the Spaniard. That's a plus five upgrade to the right-hand side of the midfield. Ferran Torres, 
Very excited to have you here, mate. Welcome to Paris FC. This only feels right. He was here from day one. We sold him, but I was looking at the side and I was like, I like the starting 11. I want to get some backup players. We desperately need a backup striker. So we have re-signed Lamine Diaby for the uh, we're so in between the time he left us, he left from Leicester to Villarreal and now has joined us back at Paris FC for 42 mil. We are going to send Ozcan and Bemba, the young French striker, out on loan for the season, however, to Sheffield United. Same deal here with Amine Ramil. Get him a little bit of growth. Send him to Leeds United for the season. No more loans for Patrick Coffey. We are sending him permanently to Crotone for 2.5 mil. Whilst Ramil is somebody that I see as a great backup option, if not a starting 11 option for the future, I have decided whilst he is out, out on loan to get an experienced campaigner. It is Jonas Omlin, the Swiss shot stopper, joining us here from Angers for 13.7 mil. So there we go, lads. The checkbook has been opened and it is a big... Big opening transfer window here in season number seven. Going to get our first Champions League group stage action. And I want to make sure we have the best squad possible to take it on. But here is a look at the starting 11 that we do have for this season. Now, I love this starting 11 for the fact that the side is so balanced. There's a few positions like the center defensive mid, center back, and even goalkeeper spot that I would like to get a little bit higher. But with me for a rebuild squad, I like to make sure that every player in my starting 11 is 85 rated or higher. That's kind of the threshold for me. Once I get the players 85 rated or higher, I tend to be like, okay, the squad can compete. The fact that our lowest rated player in the starting 11 is 86 overall fills me with a little bit of confidence here. But it's a big season. Let's go see what our Champions League group is looking like for the first time. Thank God we don't have qualifiers. Like I said earlier, thank the Lord that we don't have qualifiers. Straight into group stage action, we are in group B and we have Leverkusen, Spartak Moscow and Dinamo Zagreb in the group. Let's go see if it's first time lucky out of the group stages. We're gonna simulate in three, two, one. Top of the league lads, get in there. We finished top of group B and are qualified for the Champions League round of 16 alongside Levick. And in the round of 16, we are gonna be facing Roma. Jose Mourinho's Roma side. Round of 16, Champions League action. Come on. We are looking to go back to back in league. And however, of course, the threshold has to be really with finishing top of the league. I see the different shading where Monaco is, where PSG are. Does that mean only first automatically qualifies out of League 1? That would be really concerning if that was the case. So we're in a bit of a tighter battle this year. Only two points clear of PSG and tied on points with Monaco. Need to turn it up a notch in the second half of the season. No business done here in the January transfer window, however. Gonna keep the squad how it is. Honestly, only had about 100,000 pounds in the budget, so couldn't do too much even if we wanted to. Would have had to sell some players. I'm happy with the starting 11 right now. If we don't win this year, I'll probably look to make some upgrades in certain roles. But right now, I'm a happy camper. Let's go take on Roma in the Champions League last 16. So here we go, lads. It's our first taste of Champions League knockout round football. We obviously know how to deal with knockout football given we made it to the Europa League final last year. But this is just a whole different kettle of fish. We head to the start Olympico for the first leg, the away leg against Roma. Need to get away goals on the board. Need to give ourselves a bit of a leg up headed into this second leg. We're going to jump into it here. Taking on Roma. The scoreline is going to be a 1-0 win. We get an away goal. Would have liked, I feel like a little disappointed, but because you look at the stats, six shots, five, or yeah, six shots really. Like, we should have made it. We To only be 1-0 up is disappointing, but... We're still up. We've still got the away goal advantage. So we are at home now, fellas. 1-0 up. Need to make sure we do not bottle this against Roma. An early goal for us, or a goal in any sense of the imagination, would be great because it would mean that Roma would have to score two goals. So we're going to get into it. The first leg, or the second leg, I should say, trying to get ourselves into the quarterfinals. This scoreline is a one-all draw. It is a one-all draw. And that means, that proved my point, that early goal, or that goal, got us to the quarterfinals. We're really getting all the unlicensed teams, aren't we? It's another Italian side, another fake side. We had Roma FC, and now we get Piemonte Calcio, otherwise known as Juventus. I genuinely wonder, 
Are there people like younger kids that have only really started to get in the football the past two years through FIFA that genuinely don't know that Juventus is called Juventus? That they think that there is an Italian club called Piemonte Calcio? I seriously wonder that. Anyways, I'm gonna stop my hypothesis. I'm gonna stop my deep thinking and really get into the quarterfinals now. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for the first leg. We are at home, which means a clean sheet is a necessity. We're gonna get into it. I don't wanna really mess around here. I wanna fire straight for it as we take on Piemonte Calcio. The first leg is going to be, it's a 2-1 win. 2-1 win. They get an away goal on the board though. Again, makes me slightly nervous, but we do have the lead, so our future is in our hands. So here we go. Time for the second leg. Like I said earlier, our future is in our hands. We are on the road, traveling to Turin, traveling to Juventus, trying to get ourselves through to the Champions League semifinals. If we score a goal, that's gonna make me happy. Like, I want an away goal on the board desperately. Come on, what's the scoreline going to be? Are we through to the semi-finals? Yes, we are. Had Jam, the young left back off the bench, has scored us a winner in the 105th minute. Oh my God. Had Jam in the 105th minute gets us through to the semi-finals. I cannot believe that. Oh my. And here we go. Champions League semi-finals. Four teams remain. Two English, one Spanish, one French. It looks like it's either going to be Spurs, like, like Liverpool or Paris FC. It looks like Spurs are going to be the opponent in the Champions League final. They're 3-0 up against Real Madrid. But we need to make sure from a personal standpoint, we actually get there. We've got Liverpool. Not an easy opponent in the slightest. Let's go take on the red. So here we go, lads. The first leg is away at Anfield. It's a European night at Anfield. Famous occasion, Paris FC. It's our first time in the Champions League semi-finals, but will it be successful hunting as we head to the north part of England? We're gonna get into it. The first leg away at Anfield is going to result as a two, one win. We could have, we could have really done without Kudus getting that 90th minute goal. Though if we had a two nil advantage, I'd be feeling so damn confident. But Kudus gets a goal there for Liverpool to death. Torres and Marcias getting us away goals, but we have a big advantage. So, same situation as we had against Juventus. Our future is in our hands, but whether we can hold on and get ourselves through to a Champions League final is a different question. We are two one up against Liverpool, and we are gonna get into the second leg of the semi-final here at home in Paris. Come on, game faces, baby. Taking on Liverpool, the scoreline is a three, two, win. Come on, lads, let's go. Oh, come on, we're through to the Champions League final in our second Champions League campaign. What's that on aggregate? That's, uh, God, I'm bad at math. That's five, three on aggregate comfortably in there come on and yeah my inkling i guess you could say it's not really an inkling is it when they're three nil up but spurs have held on they're in the champions league final and that's our opponent for the final taking a look around the grounds i swear napoli have been the europa league kings in this rebuild they have won a third is that a third uh, europa league they've won this rebuild i feel like munch and gladback has lost a billion of them as well that's wild Thankfully, we have turned it on in the second half of the season. We were tied with Monaco on the 1st of January, and now we finish 17 points ahead of Monaco. PSG, 14 points behind us. So we go back to back as League and Champ. At the bottom of the table, however, Bordeaux are in the playoff game, whilst FC Nantes and Nîmes Olympic are automatically relegated. Lille, Lille came close to a relegation as well, which would be a far cry, given they won League One in real life this past season. We've also won another trophy champ this season, taking down Angers 3-1. Whilst the Cook National has not been played yet, that is between PSG and Saint Etienne. And it is the same deal here, Bordeaux and Toulouse still yet to play the promotion playoff final. But it is now time for us to take a look at the squad report here before we play the Champions League final against Tottenham. Honestly, 
I didn't expect us to be in the Champions League final at this point. I think our squad, whilst it is strong, there's certain areas I still want improvement on. I feel like Ben on the bench we're still a little late, still still a little weak. Todd Ebo probably want him to go. Like, if we lose tonight, I'm prepared and I know what I want to improve next season. But hopefully, I mean, the aim of the rebuilds is to complete the rebuild as fast as possible. So I would love if we could complete this rebuild tonight and take down uh, Tottenham, I almost said PSG. Imagine if we played PSG in the Champions League final. That would be incredible. But would love to take down Tottenham. Very excited to use the main man, Hernandez. He's an absolute gun. But we're going to get into it, lads. It is time for the Champions League final. Here in season number seven, Paris FC, Tottenham Hotspur. Somebody's going to break the Champions League drought. Paris FC, Tottenham Hotspur. Let's get this trophy home. Morning here for Tottenham. Early in, Bruno Fernandez swinging that one in. Bergevine wins the header, and it's a goal kick. I hope that's an omen for the day. Nice one, Stephen. Nice one, buddy. Get some build-up play going down the left-hand side here. It's a good run being made. Fernandez, we're gonna go out wide there. I didn't want to go to Martinez. I wanted to go to this man, Ferran Torres. That's such a Pussy shot, man. What was I doing there? How's that a foul? What? Focus up. Defend. Just cut down the angle. They put that one out to the back post. Good save, Morales. Get there, get there. Beautiful. Where were Osane playing for Spurs as well? See if we can launch. Yeah, go over the top. Nice. Oh, that's going out. Is it? No, it's kept in. We're going to go to Hernandez. Go in there. Turn, turn, turn. Shoot. 1-0. We couldn't get the green beam, but we got the white timing, and that was good enough as our Mexican striker, Jose Juan Macias, is going to give us the lead here against Spurs in the Champions League final. 1-4 Tottenham here. Headed. Just clear it. Ah. Oh. Been such a dull final, but we can't allow Tottenham to get anything here. And Dombele blocked and it's out for a corner. What? Come on, man. That's a soft penalty. That is a soft penalty. Oh, my God. There's been nothing happening in this game. And all of a sudden, Spurs now have a penalty. That's so soft. He's going to go left. You're going to go left. You're going to go left. Harry Kane. He misses. Harry Kane misses. Oh, my God. Harry Kane can't score penalties on the big occasion. He missed it against uh, in the uh, semi-final against Denmark. Obviously got the rebound there, but now he misses cold. Tottenham on the attack here. Ten minutes to go. Bruno, we've got now wires crossed. Harry Kane scores. He misses a penalty, but it's able to dink the keeper from the edge of the box. Shit, man. Come on, lads. I would love... Love, love, love to get ourselves back in front here. It's going to Hernandez. Can the regen? The regen! It's beautiful skills! Blocked! And again! Oh, that's a soft shot. That would have been insane if he scored after doing all the skill moves. Got to defend here, lads. Alberto on the attack for Spurs. Don't do it like this! They should have played that ball through there. Don't let them get any shots, though. Come on, just defend! Defend! What a touch! Todibo, just clear it! No! Clear it! No! Clear it! Just get rid. Just get rid. Oh no, they've won the ball. Please blow the whistle. Defend. Good block. They call it there. <sighs> we've got 30 minutes to go. I was stressing there. So one all draw and we're headed to extra time in the Champions League final. Come on, lads. Turning and running. We've got some numbers here. Martinez going out wide beautifully to Ferran, Tor Ferran Torres. Trying to put it in. Pressure! Oh my god, I was trying to make the block there. 
Nicely one though from Bade. Come on, we're continuing to push forward. Martinez, go on to Macias. Green beam! There it is! We've got the goal! Macias has a brace! He green beams it from the edge of the box! And we have got the lead in the Champions League final! Come on! Come on, lads. See if we can get another opportunity here before the end of the half. Hernandez. I see the run from Macias. Good touch. Macias, we're going to hold it back. We're going to lay it off. Hernandez scores another. 3-1 up. Come on, Paris FC. The stroke of half time, of extra time. And it is Hernandez. It wouldn't be right without him scoring. Hernandez makes it 3-1. Get in there. There is still time for Tottenham here. We just need to keep defending. Defending and Dombele, who is very tired as they go to Walker Peters. Good block, but it's fallen. Close it down. Game on. Game on. Yeah, please go celebrate. Please. Oh, he's, he's, he's gotten used to it. Bloody hell. All right, we need to focus up. We've got a ball game again. Come on. Blow the whistle. There it is, lads. We've done it. Oh, that was a thriller. That is one of the most entertaining Champions League finals we've played in a long time, but we have completed the Paris FC rebuild. The biggest club in Paris. The biggest club in France. The biggest club in Europe. We've done it all. Lads, if you enjoyed today's rebuild, make sure you leave a like on the video. Scorpion, kick that subscribe button down below if you're new around here. Enjoy the title celebrations. I'm out. Peace.